Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Bobby. I hope you had a great weekend and a happy new year and that 2022 closed out just right for you and that you have lots of great golf to look forward to in 2023. And to that end, I want to talk to you a little bit about something that I think is a subject that needs to be addressed more often than it is. We are all so sold on the technical aspects of the golf game that we forget sometimes that our mental package makes up 90% of how well we play, maybe even more than that. You know, when Tiger stands on the first tee of a tournament, he's not saying to himself, oh my gosh, I've got to get this thing in play so I might have a chance of winning. He's saying to himself, I'm talking about during his younger days where he was, his confidence got him through. He stood on that first tee at every tournament saying, it doesn't matter where I hit this ball. I can hit it out of bounds. I can hit the first two out of bounds. I'm still going to win this tournament. No one's as good as me. And so I've got 72 holes to catch him regardless of what happens. Well, because of that, he hit a great shot on the first shot, on the first hole, and on the second hole, and on the third, because he carried around this non-fear mindset, this complete belief in himself, and nothing will substitute for that. The best swing in the world must have trust, and plenty of it. And, um, and it really does dictate uh, how you play, whether or not you reach your level of skill, your potential, or not. And I want to share a couple of stories with you today, and, and then I'm going to share you a little trick, something to hack this pitch shot so that you can develop confidence in a shot that does not inspire confidence at all. But let me share just a couple of stories. I've got a friend named John Mitchell, who's uh, an excellent player. He's an amateur. Uh, I remember him shooting 61 one time when we were playing. Uh, he's got a couple of course records, but he's a clutch putter. And he is particularly good at making those putts to tie. I'm talking about from four and five feet away. When the match is on the line and he needs to make this to tie, he can make them. You might say, well, what do you mean a putt to tie? What about the, the putt to win? Hey, listen, the putt to tie is always harder. Why? Because if you miss it, you lose. The putt to win is just gravy. And I ask him, you know, it seems like when something's riding on the result and you've got a four or five footer, you always make them. But it, I notice also that you sort of go into your own world. What are you doing there? What are, what are you thinking about as you're standing before that, that, that clutch putt? And he said, well, Bobby, every single time after a round of golf, I don't leave until I make 50 putts from four feet. I said, oh, you're good at those four footers because you make so many of them. He said, no, 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 you're missing the point. Let me explain. He said, so because I do that every single time I practice, I'm so used to being out there by myself. When I find myself in a pressure situation, mentally, I leave that pressure packed uh, place where I am and I go to pretending like I'm out there on the putting green by myself making my 50 in a row. And typically the way it works is I make five or six, I might miss one or two, but after five or six, I pretty much have it dialed in and I'll make all the rest all the way to 50 right in a row. And so what I do is, is I'm looking at this putt, I just pretend like I've already made seven or eight or 10 of them and I'm on my way to 50 and this is just another putt, one that I never miss. So I take myself out of a pressure pack situation and put it into a place where there's no pressure. Now that seems pretty simple, doesn't it? That's just uh, imagination. And he didn't say anything about, well, I try to keep my arm close to my body or I try to keep the putter. No, 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 that's technical. That's not gonna inspire confidence. He does something that will bring about confidence because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now, I'm gonna share a little story with you, a personal story uh, about this. And I'm gonna go out of golf for a moment with the promise then that I will return. And I want you to know that what I'm about to share with you is, um, is something that's be has been very meaningful to me, as you'll find out. And if I can do it, that means you can too. Why do I say that? Because I have two arms, two legs, a head and a body, and so have you, all right? And so what one can do, others can as well. In 1997, I was fighting in a karate tournament. I've been in martial arts since I was a little boy. And I promised to bring this back to golf in just a moment. There will be a payoff here. And at, at, at 27 years old in 1997, I was 35 wins and 34 losses as an adult black, uh, an adult black belt. You couldn't be any more ordinary than me, any more lukewarm than me. I'd win one, I'd lose one. I'd win one, I'd lose one. 35 wins and 34 losses. And there was this great big tournament charity events. The 16 black belts showed up to fight in this. And the local ABC affiliate, Channel 13, sent the sportscaster, Jenny Dunn. I was friendly with her. I knew her through golf. And she showed up at the event. She said, Bobby, I didn't know you were a karate guy. She, she and I knew one another through golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, well, I'm in the blind about this stuff. What's going on? Tell me, how do you like your chances? What's up? Well, normally, you know, as I say, I could win one and lose one, but there was this particular fighter there. His name was Anthony Hawthorne. And Anthony won the New York State Kickboxing Championship. Uh, twice, and he won the North Carolina Tough Man five straight years. And he and I had fought four different times and he'd beat me all four times. And so I said, well, Jenny, how do I like my chances? Oh, I'm pretty good with most of these guys, but Anthony Hawthorne is here and he's beaten me four times. And Jenny looked at me with this penetrating stare and said something I haven't forgotten and that changed my entire life. She said, Anthony Hawthorne is here, huh? 
Do you know who else is here? Bobby Steiner is here, and that should mean something to you. Well, I don't know if it was just the right words or the way she said it, or if I was just ready to hear it, but it was in that moment that I realized that I had already played the victim, that I was gonna be his prey, that I was allowing him to be the predator. And it hit me at that same time that in those 35 times that I had won, I walked in there knowing I would win. And in those 34 times I lost, pretty much I went in there every time afraid that I might get beaten, and I did. It seemed to me like at that moment it occurred to me that the only variable was what I believed. That every, every time whatever I believed is what happened, so I just got to change my level of belief. And I looked over at Anthony, and he was standing there in the corner doing his little warm-up, and he's wearing the green neon uniform. And I thought to myself, boy, you are going down today. You can't beat me. You have no idea of this, but today I am the predator, and you are the prey. And we both won our initial matches to get us to the final, and I beat him in overtime. But not just that. I won my next 31 consecutive fights, and uh, three years later was ranked uh, number two in the nation in black belt fighting now, and retired last year at 371 wins and 62 losses, which isn't bad considering my slow start. The point is not, aren't I great? The point is, is that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Jenny didn't teach me a thing about fighting. She didn't know anything about it but she did teach me something about self-image. And we have to really take a hard look at that if we want to get the most out of the pot potential we have. We have to believe in ourselves. The best golf game in the world must have trust and plenty of it. Now, I'm gonna take that out of martial arts for just a moment and show you a little mental hack that you can use to conquer this pitch shot. And, and in the same way, just trick yourself into believing that you're good uh, and then it will, this will yield great results in a short amount of time. We all know that this fluffy lie where the ball sitting up on top of higher grass is pretty relaxation inducing compared to its scarier brother right here, the one sitting tight to the ground. This tight lie freaks people out, especially when they've got to hit some high lofted pitch to a, to a tight flag. This lie, oh, they just can't put a good swing on it. The fluffy lie, no problem. Boy, you could walk up to that thing and hit it one hand, that's no problem. But whenever it's sitting down, it's a different thing. Now, both swings, uh, or I should say both shots require the same swing. It's not that this one requires a superior swing to that. It's that this one creates the doubt and uncertainty and therefore muscular tension so that a person can't swing the same way. This lie forces a miss on a timid player. And so let's hack our system here. Let's see if we can experience share. What do I mean? Share the relaxation and fluidity and belief that we have for this shot with this one. And here's how you do it. We're just hacking our, our mindset here. I'm gonna walk up to this ball, and on a scale of one to 10, I'm going to judge for myself what level of relaxation I'm able to achieve. Now, Freddie Couples would be a 10. I'm gonna see if I can get close to 10 in terms of relaxation, not in terms of how close I get to the hole, but rather my own level of belief, confidence, and relaxation. Let me see how we do. Oh, that felt pretty good. That felt pretty good. You know what? I'm gonna say that was, it wasn't a 10, it wasn't Freddie Couples, but it felt like, that was a nine. That was a nine. I'm gonna see, now that I just experienced that, if I can sh share that same thing with this pitch shot, the one that typically scares me, but remember, I have the confidence in the feel for what is a nine swing. See if I can put that same nine swing on this golf ball. You know what? It wasn't as good. I hurried the transition, I could feel it. Now, I could feel it because I had something to contrast it with. I rushed the downswing a little bit. It wasn't terrible. I'm gonna say that was about a five. Well, that's okay. I'm not judging myself yet. I'm going to go back over here and enjoy another relaxation-inducing swing. Oh, that was smooth. I'm going to call that a 9 also. I don't think I'm ever going to get to 10, but that sure seems smooth. Then I'm going to come over here without much further ado and see if I can... Oh, that was, that was better. That wasn't a 9. That was a 7. But what do I do then? Well, I go back and forth between these two, the one that is relaxing. And sends, and sends fluid motion to my muscles and share that experience with this one and do it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until I have the same level of belief whether I'm here or there. What did I do? I just hacked my system. I just, I just took this doubt and eradicated it by sharing the experience of confidence with it. Why? Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. If I can make this into something that doesn't feel so daunting to me, then it's not. It's not. All right, and so that's a way you can conquer this standard pitch shot. But I want to remind you before I conclude here that this isn't just a pitch shot. This is everything in the world. When you have something that you feel like you're just defeated right from the outset, you are until you change the way you look at it. You know, golf is not about finding a way, being so good that you can play with doubt and uncertainty. Golf is about losing the doubt and uncertainty before you hit the next shot. 
If you're looking for the secret to golf, that's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. I look forward to seeing you next week.